preferred graft for practically peanuts. These workers get just a few euros an hour to pick radishes and courgettes. Jaijik Sin is one of tens of thousands. It makes business sense for the companies. The agricultural industry is Italy's second largest export sector. Fruit and vegetables produced in Latina are sold all over Europe. But the organized crime and human trafficking at play here stretches all the way to India. Jagjit Singh arrived in Italy 12 years ago. Friends of his in his village in Punjab in northern India had told him about Latina. They told him he could work in the fields and earn good money. He knew that life would be difficult, but not this difficult. At first, he often thought about going back. When I was alone at the beginning, I had to make my own breakfast and lunch, and also clean when I came home from work. Now that my family's here, it's all much easier. It was difficult for me to be alone for so many years. My son was so small. He wasn't even one year old when Jagjit left. Life was difficult when we had to travel. Even easy household things. Everything. Okay, bye. See you later. About 18,000 Indians work in the province of Latina. Most of them are Sikhs from Punjab. Jagjit needed years before he could buy his own car, find a small house to rent and save enough money to bring his family over. He's one of the few who was willing to talk with us openly about the work. Others were often too scared. We were free in India. I had my own business. I could arrive late for work, go home earlier if I needed to do something. It's different here. Here, you're only paid if you work. But still, I'm better off than the others. Some only get 3 euros 50 an hour. I get 5 euros 50. I work here. Plums are grown here. But they won't let us in with the camera. The owners are thieves. The companies usually don't even pay a third of the official minimum wage. Many of the men work seven days a week, up to 12 or 13 hours a day during harvest time. But these Indians are trapped in a criminal system. Most paid thousands of euros to human traffickers to get to Italy on fake papers. It can be years before they are able to pay off their debts, if at all. This debt bondage is widespread in Italy. And not only Indians are exploited. East Europeans and Africans too. Middlemen behind the scenes recruit the workers. They keep a cut of their wages and they also dictate the working hours, all of which is illegal. Careful, here's the boss. What's going on? 
We're making a program about the Indian community. You can't film here. This is a public space. I'm sorry, you were in the field. That's also a public space. Too late. What do you mean, too late? I'll write down the license number. Yes, please do that. Do it. Most companies here are part of the system. In Latina, a police unit has been set up to fight against illegal employment. Carmina Mosca is the head. It's certainly a system of organized crime and illegal immigration. Mainly Indians who work with Italians to bring people over and to get them fake papers, fake residence permits, fake visas, fake passports. Everything. It's a flourishing market. Look how well this driving license has been faked. Falsa. Look, it's simply perfect. It's difficult to break the system, but there's always somebody willing to testify. Sometimes workers talk because they're scared of being deported to India. Others are angry with the middlemen. There are many reasons. But it's hard to find good interpreters. They're also part of the community, and they're scared of cooperating with the police, denouncing people and helping us to arrest other Indians. One of the biggest producers of radishes in Europe allowed us to film. OK, now we'll go to the canteen. Over there. We were able to speak to one of the managers and ask him about recruiters and exploitation. No way. That's against our company philosophy. If we were to find such a case, we would fire the person immediately. We're not a company that doesn't treat its workers well. Activists say that the people here are also not paid the minimum wage, that they are also recruiters operating here. The workers themselves refuse to say anything. They're scared of losing their jobs. <laughs> In the evening, other workers visit the Singh family. The men have been living here for years, but they're still saving up to bring their wives over. I had to pawn my wife and sister's gold jewelry to pay for the trip to Italy. I thought that I'd earn some money fast and get it back. But in the end, we had to sell the jewellery to pay off our debts. Almost everyone who comes here has the same problem. The reality is different from the expectations. Jagjit's friend also had big hopes. He's been in Italy for eight years. During that time, he hasn't gone home once. I'm neither happy nor unhappy about the working conditions. 
The problem is that it's tough on the back, and it always aches. But nobody wants to go back to India. The money that they earn here is needed there. And it's not all doom and gloom. At the beginning, when I first arrived, I lived near the beach. It was the first time I'd swum in the sea. The Indian community has grown over the years. They have opened stores and restaurants, and there are two temples in the area. But there's not much contact with the Italian community. Sometimes I think about the people who eat our vegetables. I know that many of them are exported to Germany, to restaurants there. I often wonder if the people there think about us sometimes, and about the conditions that we work in.